welcome back to the Beverage Podcast episode seven. Seven. <laughs> seven. <laughs> episode seven <laughs> with my special guest Kyle Puckett. We exclusively do Kyle's as guests. <laughs> Kyle, welcome. That's right. It's good to be here. Good to be here. Always something I wanted to do. Always wanted to have my own radio show. But you know, <laughs> it's not yours. You're a guest. Settle down. <laughs> You know, we'll let the fans decide. <laughs> we'll let the six, maybe seven fans. <laughs> um, so Kyle, like we do every week, tell me what you did this week. What'd you watch? What'd you listen to? What'd you read? Oh, man. Well, I haven't had much time to do much of anything. You know, student teaching sucks up all your time. Mm-hmm. But I've been, I've been re-watching The X-Files on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Um... I, I love that show. <laughs> I, I always love a show that makes you think, and I love how every episode of The X-Files always ends with, you know, the bad guy isn't in prison, there's always some way that mm-hmm. they could come back in the future, so I, I love The X-Files. What have I read? A lot of boring stuff. A lot of textbooks. <laughs> a lot of lesson ideas. Uh, what have I listened to? Uh, I've listened to slash watched a lot of stuff on YouTube, uh, like I do every week. Mm-hmm. Subscribe to a whole bunch of people, movie reviews, right, comic stuff. Because I'm one of those kind of perfectionist, completionist kind of people, where if I want to read, you know, start reading Iron Man, I have to start reading issue number one. But then I have to see, okay, what what happened to s- reboot this universe? So I have to go back to the previous. <laughs> And then right. I have to read all of that. I'm like, well, what happened to get to this point? And so I have to feel, I feel like I have to read or watch everything. Mm-hmm. So being yeah. able to just like watch an eight minute video explaining some of this mm-hmm. stuff is there's, a lot more helpful to me than. There's a channel called Comics, I think it's called Comics Explained. Yeah, or I've watched like some of his that. stuff yeah. too. And then I, I uh, subscribe to Emergency Awesome. Mm-hmm. And he does a lot of stuff with yeah, the TV watch, shows, especially. I watch that too, yeah. Game of Thrones. I watch for that too. Mm-hmm. So I haven't watched him as much because it seems like everything he says I already know. <laughs> but sometimes, like if it's Game of Thrones, I might watch that. But they're in their off season now. But yeah. Uh, what did I watch? I watched Young Justice season two. Did you watch Young Justice? I I started it on Netflix I think last summer and got like halfway through season one. Mm-hmm. And I liked it. Uh, I thought it was interesting, you know, watching a show that's not Batman, Superman, mm-hmm. you know, it's Robin and Kid Flash and all those guys. It's interesting to see them get their own, get their own thing and see them at the forefront. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was good. Yeah. But I just never finished it. Yeah, season one, I never finished season two. I watched season one. And season five, season five, season two is a five year jump. So, like, Robin's Nightwing now, and, uh, uh, there's a new, Tim Drake is Robin, Mm -hmm. and, yeah, the team's a lot bigger, and there's all this stuff, like, Aqua Lad's, like, a bad guy now, and all this stuff, it's crazy, it's, like, big twists and stuff, it's really good, it's really, like, not a kid's show. (laughs) Okay, then maybe I'll have to watch season two. Season two's really good, it's not on Netflix, though, you have to kind of look around for it, if you know what I mean. Okay, you look around, yes, yes, I used to, yes, I used to live at a state (laughs) university, so I know what that means. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of uh, audio dramas, I said Mm -hmm. that last week, I'm listening to uh, the Spider-Man, it's called Spider-Man... I don't, I, it's not on my printout because I had another prompts, I guess, and it, it printed over it. <laughs> like one from last week that uh, uh, that didn't it's print the, right. The Drowned in Thunder? Drowned in Thunder, that's what yeah. it is. That's a good one. So I looked that it's up. It's with Electro and... Yeah, I looked that up to get a, read a little synopsis of it, and it looks very interesting. I like the fact that J. Jonah Jameson, I, of course I haven't read it, or listen to the audio drama, so I don't mm-hmm. know what happens in the end. I couldn't find something that spoils the end for me. Right. Which I guess is good. But 
I like the fact that J. Jonah Jameson may actually be the actual bad guy instead of the, oh, Spider-Man's a menace, mm -hmm. pounding the table, he just looks stupid. Because yeah. we all know that Spider-Man isn't a menace, and right. he's That'd just be being stupid. Yeah. That'd be interesting if they did that in a movie where J. Jonah was, like, mm -hmm. the bad guy, and, like, the secondary bad guy was, like, Scorpion, because he, he, like, Cause he works. helped finance or yeah. something like that to create Scorpion. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. That or maybe cool. he, like, gets out of control. Like, he just wants him to, like, catch Spider-Man. But he, Scorpion wants to, like, kill him or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Very cool. I don't think I've done much else. Oh, I played Magic. I finally played Magic. You finally Ma played Magic. I finally played Magic. You got spent all that money on all I those spent cards. so much money on cards. <laughs> I have, like, four decks now. <laughs> That's okay. Working on my fifth. That's okay. But I finally played. The first time I played, I just played against people who just had, like, mono-red goblins, which is, like, get as many 1-1 one -one goblins out as possible, and my deck is about, like, getting big creatures out, so I have one big creature, and they have, like, 60 goblins. <laughs> and I'm like, attack once, and they're like, <laughs> everyone attack! <laughs> oh, yeah, and then I played Thursday night. I went to Decatur, and I, I won one round, and I lost another round, but it's fine. It's a good time. Yeah, never, never been into magic. I, you know, did the whole Yu-Gi-Oh thing when I was younger, yeah. and not so long ago too, and spent maybe an embarrassing amount of money on it not too long ago. <laughs> hey, <but laughs> no judgment here. Yeah, may have ordered specific cards off the internet. And right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, a while ago they had that. I think it's a fake card. It was like Ultimate Lord. Of D or something. Yeah. And I was like, I want to make a deck room built around this guy. And I looked it up, and just like a lower D is yeah. like $12 for one. Yeah. And I'm just like. Because there's the Lord of D, and there's also the Lady of D. Yeah. <laughs> They're both real cards. <laughs> they are. Because apparently they couldn't just spell out dragon on there, even right. though they have plenty of space and plenty of cards that have longer names, but. Right. Whatever. They knew what they were doing. Exactly. Those the, Japanese. The guys like us. Those Japanese knew what they were doing. The Lord of D. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk about stuff. Let's talk about Star Wars first. Let's talk about Star Wars, as you can tell. Star Wars. He's wearing uh, his Princess Leia... <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a Boba Fett shirt. Got my Boba Fett shirt on. Which is nothing wrong with wearing a Princess Leia shirt. I don't know there is I'm nothing wrong with that. But she is... I. It's the only girl in the whole universe. Speaking of, apparently, uh, speaking of Star Wars, uh, besides Mon Mothma in the original trilogy. Right. So, uh, speaking of Star Wars, I, I really need to start reading those new comics that right. Marvel has come out with. Those are really good. I've heard that they are very good, and I need to start reading them. I, I didn't like the Princess Leia one, because I don't... That's me. That's my, okay. my opinion. Yeah. But Darth really Vader's great. Mm -hmm. The main Star Wars title's great. Uh, Lando's great. Because it's by a good writer. Mm -hmm. And what was the other one? Is there another one? I'm not sure. There's if there's I think a, there's just four. I'm not sure if there's. They just one. announced the C3PO one. <laughs> okay. I think they announced the Chewbacca one. That would be cool. Uh, and they're doing like the Road to Force Awakens book, which I think it's about like totally different characters, but who knows? Maybe tangentially involved in some events of Episode Seven. Right. Standing in the corner over here yeah. while the main characters are doing stuff. <laughs> I'm that guy from the comic! Yeah. Uh, yeah, so they released that uh, that Instagram trailer, whatever it was. It's like one extra scene, basically. Yes, you have a... Uh, there's like the First Order army, and then there's like... Yeah, from a different angle. Ripley. Same scene from a different angle. Right. Is, it, what's the, is the girl's name Ripley? Is that what her name is? I'm not I don't quite remember sure. what her name is. I'm trying like, to, yeah, I'm trying, uh, I'm trying to not right. get anything spoiled before I go to see the movie because there's so much stuff that comes out these days. Mm -hmm. There's a lot I'm of rumors. To, yeah. So there she's like looking at something, big old dong. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like the Kylo Ren with his cross guard, mm -hmm. and then like Flynn with his the blue one, which is rumored to be Anakin's. Yes, over. that's very that's very interesting. And very that, interesting. Because I heard that I talked about last week that he's like part of the some special. He's not a Sith. He's part of some special order of mm -hmm. Knights of Ren. Yeah. And then uh, he's like an he's like a relic hunter. Yeah. And it's rumored that in the opening that he he goes to Endor to get Darth Vader's helmet. 
and then on into our it's rumor that he kills Wicket. <laughs> what if he killed Wicket? Because I'd be pissed. I, contrary to or like everyone seems to hate Ewoks. When I first saw Return, I was a little kid, which is why they put Ewoks in there. It's like Ewoks, this is so awesome. Okay, yeah. So I like Ewoks personally. The more so what if Wicked kills Kylo Ren and it's Wicked under the helmet for those three movies? <laughs> so there's, there's like three Ewoks stacked yeah. up on each other? He got, he got like <laughs> some cybernetic parts or something and then it's like it opens up and it's like Wicked and it's like this big fight <laughs> in the third movie. <laughs> <laughs> that would be insane. Cause that, and that's why he wears the helmet now. Yeah, that would be insane. But because I've also heard that when the first trailer came out and he was on this, Kylo Ren was on this wooded planet, I've heard, I heard that back then that was possibly Endor, mm -hmm. so that would be cool. I really like the Relic Hunter idea because his mask looks a lot like Revan's mask if, you've, if anyone's ever played the Knights of the Old Republic games or read any of those books mm -hmm. or played the MMO. Revan plays a giant role in all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's very cool, but uh, the Ewoks... I mean, the more I watch episode six as I get older, the more and more I just kind of groan with the Ewoks. Because, I mean, I watched it when I was a kid for the first time, too, and I loved him. But the more I watch it, and the more I read about the production of episode six and what it could have been... Yeah, they were supposed to be Wookiees, weren't they? They were supposed to be Wookiees. It was either supposed to be that's where the Wookiees were from, or that there was just they were just a whole bunch of Wookiee slaves... That were helping to build the Death Star. Mm -hmm. So that would have been sweet. If you think of like French underground resistance, leather jackets and smoking cigarettes <laughs> kind of thing. Where they're leading them through the back roads of Endor. Mm -hmm. That would have been really cool. And then uh, like Steven Spielberg was supposed to direct it. He was? I didn't he was know supposed that. to direct episode 6. But uh, George Lucas got kicked out of the... Uh, yeah, he got kicked out of the Director's Guild. And then the Directors Guild wouldn't let Steven Spielberg, who was still a member, direct Episode 6 because Lucas had gotten kicked out and they didn't like him anymore. So they would have kicked Spielberg out of the Guild if he would have directed Episode 6, so then they had to find somebody else to direct it. Huh. So we almost had a Spielberg Wookiees... Spielberg directed Star Wars Spielberg, film. yeah. Spielberg, I they get him Episode now. 6. They're announcing all these other people for 8 and for 8. Yeah. Let Spielberg direct it. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be amazing. You know, he because Lucas isn't involved in it anymore, and that was 30 years ago. I'm sure they don't care that much anymore. But right, that would be cool. He's doing Ready Player One. Did you hear about that? Spielberg's directing Ready Player One. Have yeah. you ever read that book? I have not. It's really good. It's like this this futuristic society where everyone is online on this online game. It's called Oasis, and it's like this augmented reality like. It's how they do day-to-day -day life, basically. Mm -hmm. It's like they go to school on it. And they, like, go to work on it. and uh, Because the, the real world is, like, polluted and gross and everything. Yeah. Okay. And there's, like, every single uh, rep, the thing of fiction is on it. Like, there's an entire universe of Star Wars. The entire Star Wars universe is there. The entire Star Trek universe is there. You can fly in, like, get your own spaceship and fly in outer space and, like, go to all this stuff. And it's all, like, realistic and... It's ridiculous. Like, anything ever yeah. is there. And it's so, all about, like, finding this, like, Easter egg that, like, the creator put in the game. And if you find it, you get Oasis. You get the whole thing, basically. And you become, like, rich forever. <laughs> and it's, like, this big hunt to find it. Very cool. I that don't know how they're cool. going to get all these references in the movie, but... Yeah, licensing. Awesome. Right. Yeah, that would kind of be hard. Yeah, that, sound, that sounds cool. I'll definitely have to... Uh, Find that once they get some time. Yeah. Will Wheaton reads it on the audio. That's how I listen to it. Cool. I don't read books. Yeah, books. Who needs books? books. That's the guy who works in a nursing home to a guy who is a, is a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Kylo Ren kills Wicket. Yep. Kylo, I'm calling it. Calling it now. This is, this is me shrugging in indifference. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm calling Wicket killing Kylo Ren. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm calling. Okay. Yeah. Everyone, if M. Night Shyamalan gets episode 9, I'll... If I direct episode 9, <laughs> that's how I'm going to reveal it. Alright. Woo dee dee! That was him taking off his helmet. Okay. Uh, uh, they came out like a week ago, but they did the concept art for the teams. 
Yep. For Civil War. Did you look yep. at that? I did look at that. So I have looked at they, that. They're very different. I so, think Hawkeye's is the most different. Hawkeye's is very different. Hawkeye actually looks like he has some kind of uniform now. Right. He and says he's, he's not going to wear a mask. Yeah. But which, eh, I'm okay with he that. He hasn't worn a mask in the comics since he, he died back in... Uh, yeah. Where Avengers... I don't remember. Where they all... They break, the team breaks up. I don't remember mm. what it's called. Yeah, because he yeah. Like you said, he hasn't worn one in a long time. Well, but, uh, in a long time. But, yeah, it, it looks good. I really like how Hawkeye looks. You know, Captain America. This is, let me scooch this. Like, let's see, cause I, yeah, his looks, his suit looks similar to his Avengers look. I mean, which is a good, it's a good look, and I like the Captain America look, especially with, you know, Steve Rogers is all about, you know, the classics. Mm -hmm. We can't, like in uh, Winter Soldier, you know, we can't just kill people without... You know, giving them their due process and having mm -hmm. suspicion that they're going to do something bad. and You know, he's representing that old-fashioned mm -hmm. America, so I like that. I like how, uh, I like Falcon. Mm -hmm. I like how I'd he like has it. red wing. Yeah, I'd like it if he, he had more white, like red and white. It's like, it's like mm -hmm. his usual color scheme, yeah. but I can understand if he's like a stealth guy. He doesn't want like a big white, white. costume Here flying I am. around. Right? Yeah. He has his little drone, his red wing now, yeah, instead of an actual cool. Falcon. But Very cool. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting way to put it out, have it on screen, and have it not be. You know, I have this psychic link with a bird, right? Kind of in like current continuity, he can he has a psychic link with like all birds. Now that's very cool. So he's like like Aquaman of the sky, right? So he can see all around the city, like every single pigeon in New York. He can see everything at once. That's very cool. So Winter Soldier. It was, I gotta talk, I talked last week about the storyline where, uh, uh, Captain America was like, there's an inhuman and his blood makes people sterile and they're gonna sterilize everyone except for Hydra agents to, like, make, uh, so they can't have babies and they're gonna make a bunch of racist babies. And so, in that storyline, they have to fight Baron Blood, who's, like, drank the blood of this kid. So he's like full of sterilizing blood and he's going to fly up into the upper atmosphere and blow himself up to spread the blood everywhere. This is, it's cool. I thought, I liked it in the comic, but explaining it, it sounds ridiculous. Yes, it sounds ridiculous. And in that comic, he, he kills Red Wing. He like bites him because this is where Sam Wilson is, Cap. And you're like, oh no, Red Wing's dead. And Red Wing comes back as a vampire. <laughs> this is just like this vampire bird. So he comes back and you're like, Red Wing, you're alive. Oh my god. And he has like little red eyes. And you're like, he's like, hey. <laughs> and I was like, what? Hey, it's, it's edgy. That is, hey, 90s. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is also the area that gave us this long hair, bearded, one armed Aquaman. It sounds like something that would come from the 90s. His yeah. sidekick's a falcon and a vampire. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Winter Soldier, at first I thought he had a sword on his back, and then I'm like, wait, no, I'm stupid, that's a gun. It seems like his outfit looks a little bit tighter, I don't know. Yeah. It seems like he had more of a collar it, in the first it, And one. it seems like in uh, in Winter Soldier, the film, like he had a lot of ammo and grenades and stuff. <laughs> he looks, yeah. If you, want a, if you want your bad guy to look intimidating, I guess he's a good yeah. guy now, so he doesn't have as much. We like how they've got Agent Carter in there. Right. On Cap's side, so she was Sharon wasn't, Carter. Yeah. So she wasn't just some throwaway character from Winter Soldier right. that was on the screen she, for five minutes. She's supposed to be a love interest in the comics she is. Yeah. She didn't, they didn't really set that up barely at all in the yeah. first one. They were just like, ha ha, you should date her. Right. <laughs> He's like pushing two people yeah. together. Kiss. Kiss. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool that she's not just some throwaway. And then, of course, we got Ant Man sitting here on. Hawkeye's shoulder. Can't really tell his costume's different because he's... Yes, he's very tiny. And there's always... And everyone's freaking out because I think that he's going to, like, shoot Ant-Man on an arrow and he's going to punch somebody. Yeah, I've seen that on... Yes, on Tumblr. Oh, yeah. Your Tumblr. My Tumblr. And several times. <laughs> yes, because I want it to happen. We all do. Yes. If you don't if you don't know what it is or don't want it to happen and you haven't seen it, watch, watch that little gif and you will want it. Yes. Because that's so cool. <laughs> it's very cool. So that's uh, that's Team Cap. You seen the the image of them like photoshopping Black Widow <laughs> and, <the> and, <laughs> and and Winter Soldier together for Comrade Brofist. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. So 
Uh, Horse. We got Black Widow looks pretty much the same. Yep. We've seen it's the same Black Panther concept art, but yeah. it's, it's but, strange to see Black Panther on this side because we've been told that he's neutral. Yeah. It, yeah, this is the, looks exactly like the same stuff we've seen before, except they just put him in a shot with... They just copied and pasted it into <laughs> a, a shot with the rest of the group. I think his vision looked very different from Age of Ultron. Uh, I've been told that he looks different. I think he has a little bit more red on his yeah, side. I think so. He looks slightly different, but of course, just as the same with every other movie, it's going to be Iron Man that has the most difference right. because he gets a new suit every movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love the look of the suit. Yeah, it's sort of like the bleeding edge mm -hmm. from when it was not that long ago. I don't remember yeah. what era it was, but, but yeah. yeah. He's got a little repulsor. Engines all over his body. Yeah, and uh, looks like War Machine's got a new gun or something. Yeah. War Machine looks way cool. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's getting recolored or another new pattern. Same suit. Yeah. <laughs> Although I wouldn't be surprised if he got a new suit too. Now yeah. being an Avenger. Yeah, I, that makes sense because he he was probably still using <laughs> what was it the Mark II. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From, Tony's Tony's like, oh, like I'm using it like this that. one. I don't even yeah. use it. Mark 573. Yeah. You know. He's like... Yeah, what uh, what number was he up to? I think in Iron Man 3, he was up to like... Four, he's up to 42 He was Iron up to 40-something. So he's, so he's probably he's, like... He's on like... Fifth, he yeah. must be on... Because he got a new one in Avengers, Avengers, so that's 43. And then he put another one... Yeah, and then he had... At the end, because it was all CGI. And then, and then if you count the Hulkbuster... One, and Hulkbuster... So he's probably on like 45, 46, yeah. somewhere up near 50. This one looks good. Yeah, I like the look of that. From the concept art, I saw it look more like the Ultimates Universe mm -hmm. suit. I thought that would be cool if they did that, even though the, the Ultimates Universe suit is like really different. Because in the Ultimates, it takes like a whole team of people to like put it on him and like have to like fill him up with some sort of liquid to cool him so he doesn't die. And it's like, it takes forever to put on. Which I thought that was different cool an interesting idea it's so much different than him putting in a suitcase and being like boop 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 yeah so or, it's like it takes yeah. from like if the hulk is ravaging the city i need 20 minutes to put my suit on yeah. could you uh and that makes sense wait? if like i don't know it would take that long yeah. but they Instead can't of... really do that and then they eventually i hated that they like totally abandoned that idea in the ultimate universe and he's it's just like he's just an iron man he's just another iron man <laughs> So, but I don't I don't write comics. I should, but yeah, <laughs> comics. Uh, How do they work? Who knows? Yeah. So this looks good. Yeah, I'm excited for Avengers 2.5. Yeah, and then there was rumored that uh, the Hulk was in it and he got edited out. Yep. And that he is. The big reveal of what he's been doing is too big for this movie or something. It shouldn't be like a side note. Yeah. But what do you think the Hulk's doing? They've said that they're not doing Planet Hulk. So I don't want them to do Planet Hulk. I've said this before. They've got a comic. They have an animated Planet Hulk. We don't need a movie. The animated Planet Hulk was really good. Yeah. Too. I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. What is the Hulk doing? No one knows. Kyle doesn't yeah, know. No one knows. I mean, he just flies off the thing at the end of Avengers, and I could see him trying to do anything from trying to cure himself mm -hmm. because he's tired of, oops, someone hypnotized me. I accidentally raged out and blew up like half of Wakanda to that one time where I raged, accidentally raged out and blew up half of Harlem. Right. You know, he's tired of. I could see him being tired of just raging out and accidentally destroying half of a city. Right. And trying to cure himself. That happened in Avengers 1, too. Yeah. <laughs> you can just call it Xavier. Can I get some psychic defenses, maybe? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he needs he needs to up his will. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he'll, like, do the what they did in the 90s, and he'll, like, find a way to, like, make his intelligence be in charge. Mm -hmm. So he'll always be the Hulk, but he'll have be, like, banner smart. Yeah. Something like that. Or maybe something like super villainy, sinister. Well, you know, it would stop make me stop raging out if all of these stupid, stupid superhero, superpowered people were, you know, just go away. 
Hulk has always had one. Reach out. I, so I was watching this thing last night. And it's like, what if he landed in Wakanda <laughs> and he's the villain of Black Panther? <laughs> uh, what if I, he's making a vibranium suit? <gasps> no! <laughs> yes, then you could just. Yeah, let's just all go home and yeah. Let's We're not going to beat him. Let's just give up. Yeah. Uh, I had an idea of what if they're setting up like a Hulk movie where the, it's like the Hulk is on trial and then they bring in Jennifer Walters, She-Hulk, and then like you set up, yeah, she's she becomes She-Hulk in the movie. That would be very cool. It's like maybe like the leader attacks his trial and she gets hurt and she needs a transfusion and like, Bruce, I'll give you some of my blood and then they do a transfusion and then she becomes She-Hulk. Yeah. Yeah, they need to do an emergency transfusion. The only person in the room right there that's a match is Bruce Banner. Right. And they're like, oh, we don't know what's going to happen. Like, we got to save her. And then it's like, he gets he's so weak from the blood transfusion that he gets captured. And then, like, She-Hulk's like, I'll save you. I'm cool now. Yeah, very cool. I like that idea. Call me, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> uh... That's enough of that. I don't. I don't know if I want to talk about all this creative committee crap because I really don't care that much about it. <laughs> yeah. Just to touch on it, Kevin Feige sort of went over. There's this guy called Ike. What's his name? Ike. Pull Mutter. He's an eccentric billionaire. Is how he's been described. As as they all are. And he was, he's like the reason there are no Black Widow toys. He's the reason that there isn't a Fantastic Four comic. And he's been, yeah. he's saying, there, there was a rumor that he made Chris Evans pay for his own gym membership during Avengers 1. And he's just like been like on Kevin Feige over all this stuff. He's all nitpicky and like it's been said that the creative committee was the reason that Edgar Wright left the movie because they were so nitpicky they were like they would talk give notes about like littlest things that didn't matter to the tone of the movie and it would just drive people crazy but, so Kevin Feige went over their head to the Disney president and was like yo I don't want to deal with this crap so he's like okay you don't have to anymore you just talk to me now and then like a week later he's like creative committee you're out of here because <laughs> I don't want to deal with you guys yeah <clears throat> I heard a little bit about this just the other day and Another thing I heard about this uh, this Ike dude was that he's the reason we don't have a Captain Marvel movie too because he feels like a female-led superhero movie won't make any money. Mm -hmm. So, so, so now we are gonna get one. Oh, we already knew we are. Yeah, but there could have been you know a Black Widow movie or you know some kind of female-led superhero film. Mm -hmm. I mean, like that Hulk idea you just talked about is pretty much a female-led mm -hmm. superhero film. I mean, we've got the Hulk in there to draw audiences in, but. The main character of the film ends up being, would end up being the She-Hulk character. Right. So, yeah, very cool. I mean, that idea is very cool. Yes. Ike, not that cool. He's not that cool of a guy. Uh, dead air. Okay. There was a... Ezra Miller met with... Like a fan, he's like, "Tell me all about the new Flash." And they're talking, and he said that uh, he gave some details. He said that he'll still have long hair. I think he 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 hinted that he's he's going to be in Batman versus Superman. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, he, uh, he still has long hair in Batman versus Superman. And they're like, "Oh, so he's in it." And he's like, "His suit is post-apocalyptic." That's how they described it. Uh, what else did he say? What's that picture? There's something else. Uh, he's going to be ripped physique and rather than bulky, but that makes sense because Ezra he's Miller's not that yeah. big. <laughs> and he's the he's the Flash too. Right. He doesn't need to be. You well, know, usually giant. in the moot, they usually all have the same physique basically yeah. in the sh in the comics. Yeah, but which yeah. is kind of weird because he doesn't need it. Right. The Speed Force makes his muscles. So what do you think about a post? I mean, long hair. I don't care. Him being bulky, but a post-apocalyptic. I don't mind about. I don't mind those first two things, but the post-apocalyptic thing is kind of weird because what I've been getting from Batman versus Superman so far is that you know Batman and Superman have some kind of beef and they end up trying to fight it out 
and you know Wonder Woman's coming in and trying to be like, hey, stop, there are bigger problems here, and a bigger problem shows up, and it kind of organically starts to form the Justice League, where, mm -hmm. hey, we need to work together to stop this threat, and then maybe by the end of the movie they feel like, maybe we should form some kind of team, or maybe some kind of league for justice. Yes, and by then the the right film. at that moment, Barry Allen from the future comes in and he's wearing his post-apocalyptic uniform he's like I'm from the future the Justice League destroys the universe and then there's like credits yeah that, that would be super weird right or if like or if the Flash comes back from the future from post-apocalyptic yeah you know maybe after somebody blows up the world or something and he comes back in time and it's like you guys need to form the Justice League and make sure it doesn't fall apart and it's just like and it's like okay that's so I don't I don't think I like that See, I don't like this so idea just, of, like, doing your character different before you even do it the normal way. Yeah. Like, you haven't done Fantastic Four right yet. And then they try and do this whole body horror science fiction movie that flops. And it's like, you gotta do them right before you can reinvent them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Also, I think if they if they did that... My big problem is is that if the Flash comes back in time and basically tells him to start the Justice League, like forcing it down the throats when I think that they could do a good job of just kind of organically start to form the team right. out of the end of this film instead of just be like, hey, this guy from the future said we should form a team, so let's oh. form a team. <laughs> Plus the whole, you know, we've got Batman and Superman in it, obviously, and we're going to film audiences know who Batman is and whatnot, but we've got a new Batman... And a new Bruce Wayne. We've mm -hmm. got, you know, a new Alfred and all, all that new stuff with Batman. Looks like it's post-death in the family. Right. So it's going to need some explaining. You mm -hmm. know, we've got three Batman yeah. movies and then Pipeline, too. And then you've got a new character in Wonder Woman. And then, if, like, there's somebody as Cyborg. And there's someone as Aquaman. And there's someone as The Flash. And it's like, if you just throw all these characters in the movie without devoting enough time to explain all of them. Right. Oh. <laughs> this DC Universe. I wish they would stick to TV. That's how I feel. That's what I care about. Just put Batman and Superman on TV. Yeah, because... They give would, up on movies. <laughs> that, would, that would honestly... It would take their... The TV Universe, which is right now, which is pretty great. Yeah. And then they, they would take it to just that next level and they'd be able to do all kinds of different stories that they maybe can't do right now. But they're just or giving they, all the Batman sources to Arrow. Arrow. <laughs> yeah. Or they could just... Stop giving all the Batman stories to Arrow. <laughs> now they have Supergirl, so they can give all the Superman stories to Supergirl. Mm -hmm. <sighs> uh, then they announced that uh, I don't. I didn't write down who it was. They have a guy playing Zoom. Mm -hmm. Just his voice. Yeah. He played Candyman, I think. I can't remember. Probably on that site. I don't know if I. Click the link, but yeah, uh, I don't remember his name. I'm sorry, uh, but it's gonna, they said it's gonna be like a CGI body, and he's gonna do the voice. Mm -hmm. The actor playing him is African American, so and Wally West is gonna be on the show, and he's African American. So mm -hmm. there's rumors that they're connected. That maybe Zoom is like a future alternate universe version of Wally, or like a future version of Wally. So. Thoughts? <laughs> Thoughts? <clears throat> I think that's a uh, I think that's a very cool idea. I think that, uh, of course, first they'd have to introduce Wally West so people know who Wally West is before right. evil Wally West comes along. Right. So otherwise, that reveal would be kind of flat if they're all like <gasps> Wally West, and then the audience at home is just like, "Who's Wally West?" Right. You know. But I think it's it, it's interesting, definitely, with the end of season one. Spoilers. With the wormhole or whatever that opens up at the end of season one, mm -hmm. bringing all this stuff over from like Earth two, so like Jay Garrick is gonna come and help mm -hmm. him out fight Zoom, who's presumably I would think would be from Earth two as well. Right, I think that's what I heard. He said he's from. But how I heard it described is like Zoom is like the way he's being CGI is that you, he's like stuck between universes or something. So he's gonna be you don't know where his suit starts, and so he's gonna be like sort of blurry, but blurrier. <laughs> You gotta have that blur, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and we and we we know we're having Wally West, Jay Garrick, and then 
Yeah. Liberty Liberty Bell or something. Yeah, Another Jesse, sp- they Jesse, cast Quick. Jesse Quick. Jesse Quick. Liberty Bell. Who's that? Well, Jesse Quick. Apparently she eventually becomes Liberty right. Bell. But. That's right. So there's, there's three other speedsters. Yes. And we have Flash and Zoom. So that's five speedsters. So this really is the Flash show. Everybody's everybody's fast. Yes, everybody can. Gotta go Flash. Yes. And Sonic shows up in season three. <laughs> yes, Sonic is from Earth 3. Yes. Earth Chili Dog. <laughs> yes, where Barry Allen ducks right before the bolt of lightning hits him and his hedgehog gets hit. Oh, his hedgehog pushes him out of the way. <laughs> no, Sonic! Oh my god, you're disgusting. What happened? <laughs> Gotta go fast. It can talk? So, oh god, kill it! <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, I think that's very cool. The only thing I'm worried about is if they introduce too many speedsters too quickly. It could right. be like... You know, uh, Syndrome in the Incredibles says if everyone's super, no one is. Right. Or if everyone can run fast, or if everyone has superpowers. If, if everyone is fast, no one is fast. Yeah, so if everyone has some kind of speed power, or, you know, maybe in the case of the first Flash, not necessarily speed force, but some kind of time manipulation that's weird and whatnot that's kind of the same, but not. You would right. kind of, okay, everyone's super fast. Right. So all the other characters just stand there and wait for right. all these bolts of lightning. You know, be, you know what would be a cool episode idea is if you have all the speedsters on an episode and the entire episode is like two seconds, but it, in time, they're, you're seeing it through their eyes, it's like 30 minutes mm-hmm. of them like, if there's like bombs all over this town or something and they have to like run to get it and like, as they're running, they're like, someone like dropped their ice cream or something. He's like, Boop. Yeah. <laughs> That would be really cool, and then just the end of and the end of the episode is just like that five seconds, right. and you just see whoosh, bolts of lightning, right. and then just credits. That mm-hmm. one, that's a really cool idea. So DC Warner Brothers, call Tucker. Call me. Whoops, my phone number is on the iTunes page. <laughs> Not my phone number, but my email. We are on iTunes now. Okay, I'll say it again later in case you turn this off <laughs> for some reason and skipped it. Uh. Thing with TV. Did you watch uh, uh, season Arrow season four trailer? I did watch the Arrow season four trailer. What did you think? Saw a little Constantine on there. I saw yes, the brief little flash of John Constantine. You saw that Katie Lutz's canary. What's her name on the show? I think she's going to White be like canary. White Canary. White Canary. What's her character name? Uh, Sarah. Sarah. Lutz. That's it. Yeah. Sarah, she's Sarah Lane. Lance. 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 Yeah. What's wrong with me? Uh, she's coming back because we know she's going to be on Legends of Tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daigle has his Magneto helmet. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I, I watched the trailer earlier earlier today, and uh, the second comment on YouTube was, hey, it's Black Magneto. So, there you go. I, I, I said Mag. Meg Diggle, but or Dignito or something. <laughs> Dignito, like that. that's a great name. Dignito. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're not trying to set him up as someone. I thought he'd be cool as like the Guardian. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm excited for it. I like his new his new costume looks mm-hmm. cool in action. Damien Dark seems like an interesting villain. Yep. Uh, apparently, they think Ray Palmer's dead. But that's what he said. Small. Yeah, that's what he said in that Legends of Tomorrow trailer. It's like I wasn't yeah. dead. I was just I just shrunk. Yeah, it's like a big tra- spoiler if you saw that trailer yeah. like six months or however long ago it was, yeah. at the beginning of the summer. It's so like let's ruin season four. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so that explains that explained it explained a couple things the trailer did from what I've seen of season four, like uh, promotional images and whatnot. Like they, how? Why did they rename it Star City? Just some random idea Ray Palmer had. So okay, they think he's dead, so they're gonna rename it in his honor. The only problem they had with the trailer was the beginning of it. It's just like Oliver running and whatnot. Like mm-hmm. they've got him and Felicity have a nice house and whatnot. It seems like they're happy. Yeah. And then like thirty seconds into the trailer, everybody else is talking to Oliver, and they're like, "We need the arrow." And five seconds later, he's the arrow again. Right. When at the beginning of the trailer, he's like, "I don't want to do that anymore. The arrow is dead." Right. So I hope it's not just like he gets called on the phone by somebody being like, we need the arrow, and he comes back and he's the arrow again. It's right. like, okay. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that's what episode one will be. It's just like, 
I'm happy in suburbia with banging this hot girl. And then it's like, we need you to come shoot arrows at bad guys. And I was like, what the f***? <laughs> you guys can't do anything. I leave for like one month and everything goes to crap. Uh, and it seems like there's going to finally be some fallout from the uh, mm -hmm. the Lazarus fish. He's going to go a little bit crazy. Yeah, because that was another thing that they spent like four episodes building up where right. like, we might not want to put her in the Lazarus pit because she might go crazy. And then she was totally fine yeah, for the rest was, of season three. She was like, she came out and she was a little bit yeah. zippy and then she's fine. Yeah. And then well, we're going to get a little bit. Sounds like she's going to go a little bit crazy, which is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole, and the whole Malcolm Merlin thing is Rachel Ghoul could turn out to be... Interesting, although I don't know how much of that storyline we're going to get. Well, we'll probably get a few episodes. Yeah, because they kind of built up season two into season three with the League of Assassins, and that was all of season three, and now that that's kind of been concluded, mm -hmm. I don't know how much we're going to get of that. But I'm sure they'll play with it again, but I, I, don't, I wouldn't want another season of League of Assassins. Yeah. Just, yeah. Season three was... I, at least I thought was not as good as season two. Season two was amazing. Season two was really good. That's where it really got good for me. Season one, I was kind of like, "What is this show? Why am I? I was watching it just to watch it." <laughs> and then like season two got really good with Deathstroke and all that. Yeah, it was personal. Uh, right. I think it would be cool if they like, because they, you know, I think Damian Dark and Zoom are gonna be in Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, I think with so. With Vandal Savage. Mm -hmm. It'd be cool if they, like, set up a Legion of Doom, sort of, like, with Deathstroke in there, too. And maybe, yeah. I hope, I don't think they could do Grodd. If Grodd was in there, too, that would be awesome. If their budget will allow it. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. That would be cool. Yeah. So, that may, they, so they might need to form some kind of society of, of justice or something. <laughs> society of justice. Mm. Uh... What else? Mm, Luke Cage, they, they they cast Misty Knight and Cottonmouth. <laughs> uh, and I think a Diamondback, they cast Diamondback as well. I didn't know who, it, who that was. Uh, Misty Knight's cool. I don't know if she'll have a robot arm in that, but mm -hmm. what, are your, what do you think thinking about Luke Cage. Are you excited for it? What I, do you think the story's going to be? I am I, excited about Luke Cage. And after reading uh, the casting of, of Cottonmouth and a little bit about his story and how his connection with Luke Cage, I think it's going to be very interesting. And I think it would be cool to see him set up Luke Cage and Luke Cage get in trouble. And him being maybe the big bad of the season or maybe the the one step down, the Darth Vader or someone else's Emperor Palpatine and Luke Cage will have to fight his way through New York, through Harlem and fight his way through up to get to uh, Cottonmouth. So it'd be very cool and after watching Daredevil season one, whatever they want to do <laughs> right. is fine with me. Right. As long, I mean, if they keep that same kind of tone and that same kind of same kind of pacing that they had with Daredevil because it was like every single episode of Daredevil there was something good in there there was you know something solid in there it always advanced the story the tone was great it was just one of those things where they didn't necessarily end on cliffhangers but it was still just like I, I need to watch the next episode I need to watch the next episode so right. I'm hoping that Luke Cage and Jessica Jones and Iron Fist will be the same way. It seems like Luke Cage has a lot more uh, super, or like, char comic characters in it so far. Yeah. There wasn't, he had like your basic cast on Daredevil. Yeah, from Daredevil. So because we got Cottonmouth, you got Misty Knight, we got Diamondback, there was another one that was announced. Uh, I don't know. I hope it, because that's one of the qualms I've heard is that they don't have enough comic people in it. Mm-hmm. For some people, whereas DC, the Arrow is like, most of every week they have a, a, a comic book character in it, like mm -hmm. a new one or something. Yeah, like, seems especially like the Flash, seems, seems like, like every week it's yeah. like another person from the comic came it in. It seems like, especially like every season on Arrow, it, yeah, we've only had one season of the Flash so far, but even with the stuff they've released for season two, 
you know, it's just they're adding all of these different characters, and maybe characters you never heard of. Like, I've never heard of, uh, like, Mr. Terrific. Oh, yeah, Mr. Terrific. On Arrow, but it's just, like, from what I've seen of him, what I've read about him, like, and what they've done with Arrow so far. Yeah. I'm really excited, and I saw in the trailer when he's talking with Felicity and they throw up the little sphere, and you're like, his... He's like, don't oh, drop yeah. that. <laughs> That was cool. I'm Very excited cool. for Mr. Terrific. Very cool. It's nice that they're getting some of these characters that don't really get their due maybe in the comics or they're, they're not popular enough or well-known enough to be in these big movies to put them on TV and really let them be able to shine, I think is very cool. Yeah, that's true. Uh, mm, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. teaser? Did you watch it? I did watch that. Are you watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Some people aren't. Some people don't like it. I like it. Yeah. Just for the fact that it's part of the MCU yeah. and that it matters, basically. That's why I watch it. Yeah. But some people don't like it. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the show that I watch during the summer when I don't have anything to do. Oh. Where, I, where I can watch it, like, all, not necessarily in one sitting, but where I can watch it in, like, a week. Right. And not have to wait to see it because to me a lot of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episodes aren't really that like exciting enough right. to keep me coming back every week but if I can just sit there and watch them all on Netflix in a week I'll do it right yeah, I thought the I thought the last half or last quarter or so of season two was good <laughs> that's usually how it is <laughs> yeah that's how it was with season one yeah so if you're gonna watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't watch like the last five episodes yeah I thought that got really cool and then the whole you know Spoiler alert, Sky pushing the the Quinjet full of the uh, Terrigen crystals into the ocean and then mm -hmm. getting in the fish. And then Gets in making, the fish oil. Making the fish oil pills. Yeah. You know. Because it's like, cool. they don't have that metal in them anymore. They like dissolved them like got in the fish. They got in the fish? Is that what happens? Yeah. And they make fish oil. And they pills. make the fish oil out of the fish. So Because people were dying because there was like that metal was in it from mm -hmm. the... The Viner. Yeah. So, so yeah. So now Inhumans are going to start There will be more Inhumans. Out. I think it's going to be cool that they're going to do Inhumans in the TV show. Mm -hmm. They're doing Secret Warriors. So it's not just like some random thing that's kind of off to the side of everything else that's happening in the Marvel Universe like it was in season one. Mm -hmm. Where it was just like they were doing stuff and then uh, Winter Soldier came out and it was all about S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, they were kind of off-related a little bit to what was going on in the movie universe, but now they have kind of their own thing that they're doing. Right. I think they should stick to their own thing. Because they sort of commented on Age of Ultron a little bit. The tie-in yeah. episode wasn't was okay. I heard an idea that their tie-in episode should have been, like, all of them versus one of those Ultron drone, droids. Yeah. Droids. Droids. Because... <laughs> Uh, just to show how strong it is. Mm -hmm. uh, they had, they have it. I think the the big villain is Lash from the comics. He's a newer Inhuman character, and they sort of showed him at the end. He looked kind of goofy. He did. <laughs> looked very goofy. He really did. He's he in the comics. He's drawn like this big hulking Hulk sized guy with big anime hair and red eyes. So it's just, maybe you should have picked someone else. <laughs> <laughs> he looks kind of goofy, but... I think, I do think it's also very smart for Marvel to put Inhumans in the TV show and play them up over the next few years before the Inhumans movie comes out. Mm -hmm. So that people know who they are. Right. And what they're about a little bit. You know, they might not know who the main cast of Inhumans are, but they know, oh, Inhumans, this is what the TV show's been talking about. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to go through, like, 45 minutes of backstory... Right. And humans and just get to something in there. Mm -hmm. They did have that good scene in season two or when, when Sky like had her powers mm -hmm. finally and she was like she takes she's like in some lab or something, she's like going in like <laughs> taking out all those guys and yeah. like rolling over the table and then like then at the end she's just like ramp <laughs> yeah. she just shocks them all, just like do that at the beginning. Yes. Lead with that next time, yeah. as, as Rhodey would say. Right. 
is she in her in the comics she can just like point at someone's heart and make it explode. Yeah, and when she was going through her little training montage there, she was like looking at that mountain range and like causing avalanches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why don't you just uh, do that to like people's faces? She just needs to learn how to focus it a little yeah. bit. Get some of those gloves. With my comic, she has to like work with the gloves to control them. But I can understand as an actress, it's like, I don't want to wear those every week. <laughs> those big ass metal gloves. But. Maybe. Maybe she'll get them for like special missions that help focus her powers or something. I don't know. Uh, I have a lot of stuff that. I got through most of it. So let's talk about this. <laughs> uh. Recently this week, I was watching a Game Grumps video. Do you watch Game Grumps? I have watched a few, yeah. It's a, it's a Let's Play channel where they just rant and like yell, yell at games. And they were, it was a Harry Potter game they were playing, and they were asking, it was this, this guy and his wife were playing it, and she it was arguing, they were getting in an argument about how Vegeta could beat up Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hmm, could Vegeta beat up Harry Potter? Yes. And, I, and you know a lot about Harry Potter, don't you? Yeah. So, how, let me ask you this. Vegeta could beat up Harry Potter. I'm not going to argue that. Yeah. How strong do uh, you think Dumbledore could beat up Vegeta? Because there are some spell, I don't know how many. You can't. I'm. I'm gonna go and say that they're not gonna use any of the forbidden cur- curses. Yeah. See that. So you can't use a killing curse, which is I have a, I'm not sure how much magical resistance Vegeta has, because Bobbity is a, was a wizard, mm-hmm. and he could control, could control the it. king of hell, basically, which who Dodoria was. But that couldn't even control Vegeta because Vegeta was still doing his own thing when he was under his control. So you could argue that he has some magical resistance? Yeah, I would say that the biggest thing that I would have with anybody from the Harry Potter universe who wasn't super evil fighting Vegeta would be that they would be hesitant to use some of these bigger spells that mm-hmm. would take out Vegeta. Right. You know, Vegeta, I think, would be overconfident. Right. Because he's Vegeta. Right. And seeing this little dork with glasses and a stick and he would kind of underestimate him and then eventually I think he would make him angry enough and he would just kind of rip him in half. Right. But it's really all he has to do is break his wand. Yeah. But Vegeta wouldn't just break his wand, he'd probably punch him in the gut and send him flying. <laughs> Plus, you know, you watch Dragon Ball Z and people get into fights and whatnot and how fast they can move mm-hmm. in Dragon Ball Z and you think, okay, I have to like point my wand at you and say something. Right. You know, Vegeta will instant transmission behind me and rip my spine out. Right. If he, I mean, Vegeta's, I think he's a smart enough strategist to know if they have to say something to cast a spell, he'd just punch them in the throat. Yeah. Or just break their wand, or just knock them out, or just blow them away. So, Harry Potter is done. How many, you know, it's like three spells, <laughs> or something. You know, like Reducto, and then Sepum. Stinky yeah. or something. Yeah, Sectum Sempra. Which just makes you bleed internally or something. Yeah, something like that. And then um, the one Scarpera. the one that I think the one that I think Vegeta might have some trouble with would just be the stupefy that paralyzes you. Mm-hmm. Where especially if Vegeta is underestimating him at the beginning, he might just hit him with this and Vegeta might get paralyzed and mm-hmm. Harry Potter just like walk away. But I don't know. That could be interesting. How much I said how much actual resistance he'd have to that. Because mm-hmm. didn't Bobbity try and like paralyze Piccolo with something and he just broke free of it? And I'm... Is Bobbity a better wizard than Harry Potter is my question. <laughs> so I'm saying he is because he could control the Doria who is, who is described as Satan, basically. He is Satan. <laughs> yeah. I think so, especially if we're talking about, like, in the books Harry Potter, and not, like, in the future, when he becomes, he eventually becomes an Auror mm-hmm. with Ron, so he becomes a, you know, magical FBI agent. Right. 
So he was probably pretty darn good at his job. Right. But, you know, throughout the books, Harry was consistently not the best at pretty much everything. Okay. So, so let's say, how many, how many Z warriors would it take <laughs> to beat Voldemort? At least two. Because the first one's going to be Goku or Vegeta, and they're going to be overconfident, and they're going to be like, he's going to be like, oh, 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 and then he's just going to be like, Avada Kedavra, you're dead. And everyone's going to be like, oh, my God. And then he's, he's going to point his wand at the next guy, and then he's going to be like, Avada, punch in the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think two is the right answer. <laughs> right. So how yep. many, so, so how many Death Eaters would it take to kill the Z Warriors? <laughs> Probably all of them. Right. To even have a chance. Right. Because they might get one or two at the beginning when they're like, duh, you just stupid British people with sticks. Right. And then they would just, you know, like, drop a giant spirit bomb on them and kill all of them. Mm -hmm. Go super fast and rip all their heads off. Right. Piccolo has, you know he's pretty good aim, because in the World Tournament Saga, when they were all taking pictures... He, just, he blew up all those cameras with his eye beams in like one second, so he could probably take out a few wands and like, he, he's a good yeah. enough strategist that he could be like, oh, they cast with wands, so it's just like, 20 wands are gone, and they're just useless. <laughs> yeah. You know, line them up and give them a few seconds to charge up a special beam cannon. Yeah, that's true. They could all just do like, everybody can shoot them at once. So how fast does did they go when they what is it evaporate or evaporate? Oh, uh, apparate. Apparate. That's it. I don't know. There's they don't like have a, all this this data down in those books. No. <laughs> no, they don't have any kind of scientific measurements in there. Who knows? But as far as this is why I had you on, yeah. so I could we could we could debate this. <laughs> as far as like the fluff is concerned, it seems like it's pretty much instant, but you have to be. F super focused on where you're going. Right. So you're Otherwise, not all of you might show up. Okay. So, being shot by crazy laser beams might <laughs> make you for focus. Especially if you're getting shot at by a green alien dude. <laughs> you've, never, you've never seen aliens before. That might freak you out a little bit, and you might accidentally apparate half of yourself into a wall, right. and then you're dead. True. Whereas they could just be like, oops, instant transmission, I do this all the time. So, short answer, Dragon Ball Z rules. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have three minutes. I don't remember if I had a pick. I keep, I'm not reading that much. I'm reading, I'm still reading, Secret Wars is still going on. So, I'm just reading tie-ins. <laughs> I don't want to recommend a tie-in to people who aren't reading Secret Wars. And the only thing I'm reading from DC is Batman, basically. So I'll recommend Batman. Right now, Batman is no longer Batman. Jim Gordon's Batman right now, which I think is cool. And so I'm not sure. I think there are two or three issues in to this arc. So it's like he has that big, like a big mechanized suit, and that's like his Batmobile. Mm -hmm. And he has a gun that shoots like little batarangs, which is cool. I like it a lot. So if you want to try something new. Check it out. Batman will be back. So I really don't like when people are like, he's not Batman. Bruce Wayne's Batman. Or like, Captain America isn't black. Or Thor's not a girl. It's like, they'll be back. Yeah. Things are cyclical in comics. They're going to try something new. You just, in my opinion, to be a comic fan, you kind of have to roll with the punches. So you know that Thor's going to be back. Captain America's going to be back. Bruce is going to be back as Batman. So you got to just, like, enjoy the stories that are happening. It's something new. So something that's different. Just enjoy it while it's different because it's going to go back to the old, something similar to what was old. Because you'll always have the old stories if that's what you're into. Mm -hmm. But So, like, it's 2015. Things change. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. All right, so 
That's it. We got 30 seconds. Kyle, thanks for joining me. Yeah, my pleasure. On my podcast. <laughs> How dare you interrupt me. <laughs> uh, everyone, we are on iTunes now. The Beverage Podcast. Feel free to subscribe, rate, and review. I think that all. If I get an, if you get enough, you're like get on the front page of News and Noteworthy. I don't think that'll ever happen, but <laughs> uh, feel free to subscribe. Because if you subscribe, that's the easiest way to get it now. It's because you'll, so you can set it up so it just automatically downloads onto your iTunes or your iPod. If you're that into the show, <laughs> I'm still gonna put it on YouTube if you prefer that. Uh, but use iTunes because I'm actually paying money to put it on there. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm an idiot. Um, so yeah. Subscribe. Comment. Who do you think would have win? How many Z Warriors would it take? Or how many Death Eaters would it take to kill <laughs> Z Fighters? Let me know. Leave a comment. If you say Harry Potter would beat against Vegeta, unsubscribe because I don't even <laughs> want you to listen to the podcast. Alright. Thanks for listening. Bye! Say goodbye. Goodbye, world. <laughs>